Welcome, my name is Terry Jones, and here I am going to be doing a alcohol ink on an Alumacore panel. So the first thing I do is I'm using uh, two different colors. I'm using slate and uh, denim, and I am pouncing a sky in. This is a pretty quick process, and what you'll notice is the sky will settle down really quickly. So even though there are some marks in it to start with, now it'll settle out. There it is all settled out, and I'm going to pour some mountains in. That was a stonewashed rust, and I'm going to add some Everglades. And I will use a little stir stick and uh, kind of manipulate just a little bit. Little bit is the key here. You don't want to do a whole lot of manipulation. You just want it to start looking like there's some tops of hills and some mountain ridges coming out. Don't forget, this is a background. So right now, I decided that I didn't like that dark line, so I'm exploring how I'm going to finish the mountains up there. And what I decided to do was to add just kind of looking like there were more snowy mountains in the back. So I'm just using a, um, a brush, and I am removing some of the color, and I am adding some of that color back in. I really liked that effect in the end, and I'm just fixing the little edge there. Um, so the next thing that I will do is I'm going to start um, pulling off some of the color. Uh, I'll use a Q-tip, and it's a pretty dry Q-tip, and I put a lot of pressure down, and what I'm doing is pulling back to what would be white, but on a, a panel like this, it's actually um, silver. So starting at the bottom to make my trees, I find if I try to start in the middle of something with one of these Q-tips, I tend to end up with blobs. So doing a pattern of trees here, and you can do any pattern that you really would like for your trees. I just kind of working my way through. I'll have anywhere from three to five little birch trees here by the time I get finished. Again, I keep on having to clean my, um, clean my Q-tip, and you do not want to have a lot of alcohol on this. Um, I'm also using a fair amount of pressure to clean it off. And uh, so I'll just keep on going and keep on going, cleaning off until I have a pleasing little pattern here of some sort. Um, I... As you can see, this aluminum is really shiny. It's actually hard for me to film this because of how shiny the aluminum is. But uh, again, clearing off, clearing off. I'm, I wanna make this one thicker and more in the foreground than some of the ones in the background. So off we go. So, so now I'm just, doing a little tiny bit of extra cleaning. And in a second, I'll take my um, Sharpie and I will start making the actual, um, oh, no, I'm still cleaning up. Cleaning up. I want it to be as clean as possible because once I start working with the Sharpie, um, I'm going to end up uh, wanting to soften some of those lines, but I don't want all of that green in it. I want it to be more brown. So I go up one side usually of my birch trees and um, I will come back and soften this Sharpie uh, with some other colors. I think I'm gonna use rust and maybe some mushroom for some softening. And um, this is just kind of adding a few little details so that the painting starts looking as if it really is birch trees. Um, and there's oh, oh so many ways of making birch trees. Uh, what you'll see me doing frequently is moving the picture around itself. I don't like to try to work over the picture. Um, I tend to move it so it's easy for me to work with my uh, with my either my brush or in this case my uh, marker. This is an ultra fine tip Sharpie. 
so I'll just keep on working on it. Again, I decided I wanted to make this thicker. I didn't like the, the thickness of that tree. It looked too thin to me. So I am expanding my, my space there with a Q-tip. And um, I had a little bit of a challenge here, but it is what it is. I, I do frequently say alcohol inks are just an opportunity to change your mind because you'll be doing things and all of a sudden it's say, oops, now I have to do something different. So again, just making some fine little marks and these aren't the final little marks. Uh, what happens is that once I start working in this with a little bit of the rust, it will end up looking much different. It softens the dark lines and it um, it will look different. So at you're watching me now take some of the alcohol out of the color. Um, if you use the color directly out of the um, out of the bottle, it moves too much. So I put it in a palette and then I manipulate it a bit so that it will um, not move as much. It's thicker, it's darker. Um, as I pick up this little bit of the black, the black tends to turn a little bit of purple, but that looks really good with the, um, with the, the gingery color, or the rusty color of, of the bark. Um, so the other thing you'll notice is I'm not using necessarily the tip of my brush. I'm laying the side of my brush in and making little square strokes. You could use a, a square brush for this, but I've just gotten to the habit of doing it a bit with my, my regular round, but just using the sides. So, and here I am. What you're seeing is I have very gray hair. <laughs> Uh, the camera decided to focus on my hair instead of the painting I was trying to do there. But um, there I go. And again, very gray hair. My hair matches the uh, substrate there. So trying to get the edges looking right, I think I decided I was going to expand some of them, trying to get the branches looking right. So, I'm getting more details in with the black Sharpie. I'm gonna have to remember not to move over quite as much all the time. So these are the fine last details. And uh, again, opportunity to change your mind. I decided I wanted to make this thicker down at the bottom. So that's what I did with a little bit of, of color and a, just a tiny bit of calligraphy with the, with the pen. And uh, Making marks in the snow to indicate a little bit maybe of shadows, uh, little round circles right there. I decided I really didn't like my squishies that much, so I went back and I went and did a round circle instead. Again, opportunity to change your mind. There's so many different things you can do with alcohol inks. So I'm getting to the final details. At this point, I want to figure out where my light source is, which I just done by putting one drop. And uh, that was a drop of alcohol. And so there is a moon there. And I really like the dark sky um, and the moon. So I'm thinking of it's like moon shadows here. I originally was going to put some snow on it, but I don't think I'm going to put that. I think I like the bright 
dark sky with the moon and the trees in front of the, <clears throat> the mountains. And the mountains are fairly dark, just catching a little bit of that moonlight. Uh, we get beautiful days like this up here in the Smokies. I live in the, the Smoky Mountains. And uh, I'm just putting some more shape to the snow, kind of thinking that there's hills and shadows in there, maybe a little bit of, uh, of grass is breaking through. And I am just about done. Again, you can see how I move it <laughs> and uh, you know, don't try. I, I would be more likely to move my um, painting than to try to change my hands. I like that little branch I just put through the moon, adding some little black branches to it. Final details, there's not much else to do here. And I want to thank you guys for watching me. I really appreciate it. And I hope you'll follow me. Thank you. Bye.